That better not have been the last mission. I'd be so mad. With each passing day, news of new Aurelian victories came pouring in. The Southern Cross's actions spurred the surviving Aurelian troops to battle. Commanding Officer Diego Navarro has retreated and is currently being pursued by special forces. No one would have guessed that a ragtag band of soldiers smaller than a single unit could have put up such fierce resistance. December 10th, several days after the liberation of Griswold, I made my way towards one of the many cities busy recovering from the ravages of the war. Despite my usual misgivings, I could feel myself getting excited at the prospect of meeting the Southern Cross. But when I reached the base, I saw his emblem already gleaming in the skies above. I had heard that today was their first break in a while, but something must have changed that. I merely watched as okay, the jet contrail more stuff stretched going on. far off into the distant sky. Suddenly, I was overcome by a strong sense of dread. The misappropriated financial and material resources were on a scale much greater than the airborne fortress alone could account for. Would the weapon at Griswold prove to be the missing piece to the puzzle? Updated situation report. The forces hunting LASAF Commander Diego Navarro have been decimated at the Danern Straits. It appears that LASAF has developed a new type of attack aircraft. I can't believe they had a working prototype from the aerial fortress. Sorry, back to the report. The new attack aircraft is named Fenrir, according to LASAF reports. From the satellite intel gathered, it appears that the aircraft took off from Sentry Island. We received information from intelligence services that there appears to be a factory on the island. There are two routes to Sentry Island. First, LASAT has a squadron of ace pilots, the Alex Squadron, situated near the Danern Straits. They are currently headed for Sentry Island. If a pilot of that caliber were to pilot the new craft, we would have a lot of trouble on our hands. Another route is Cobalt Cave, the location of enemy research facilities. It is believed that they are preparing to move some sort of weapon. We don't know the details, but it is most likely a weapon to mount to Fenrir. The ace pilots and the unknown weapon are both major concerns but we can only deal with one of these threats. You must stop whatever LASAF has planned. You are about to enter LASAF territory. We don't have much intel to go on, but you need to decide how to proceed. So, do we want it to have a better pilot or do we want it to have a fancier weapon? First, let's see what our plane is going to be. Corneas. Oh shit, I can go full on Nukem on everybody. Or I can go with the classic. Well, I know how these last two missions are panning out.
take on Apollo Squadron with the F-15, or Elect Squadron. I'd rather do an out-of-air than an out-of-ship, so that's what I'm, what I'm thinking. Intelligence has confirmed the outline of a squadron of Laysath fighters bound for Archelon Fortress. A sympathizer from within the enemy has informed us that the squadron is none other than Laysath's elite, Alex Squadron. If they were to capture Archelon Fortress's Fenrir, one can only imagine the devastation they would cause. The Danern Straits could provide us with a chance to intercept them before they reach the fortress. Your mission will be to take on this elite air unit. You must destroy them all.
Right, you can't even switch to the uh, fasting. PS2 one has never given me this much trouble. Stupid nimble as well. I know I thought I got the container ship. One, the in carrier landing jack. You are clear to land. Now to crash on the carrier. I can't even really see where it is. Three miles to touchdown. Oh, there it is. You know, I, I feel like I'd be better down. off without this big th cross in the way because I can't see where I'm trying to land. You're coming in too fast. Slow down. Perfect, sir. Stand by and I can barely see the damn carrier.
We've succeeded in stopping the Alec unit before they could reach Archelon Fortress. It was an extremely dangerous mission, but we had to stop them from getting behind the controls of Fenrir. This was a very important victory for us. Great work. The enemy transportation corps has moved from Cobalt Cave to Archelon Fortress. Our sources have confirmed our suspicions that the cargo was indeed an HPM. It'll most likely be used to defend Archelon Fortress. doesn't even matter, I'm going to be taking a lot of hits anyways, or I can't take that many hits on hard anyways. Excuse to use the Apollos, I guess. The Fornius. The new weapon under development at Cobalt Cave has been relocated to Archelon Fortress. We have learned that it's an HPM to be mounted to Fenrir. The weapon's targeting system relies on orbiting satellites, so we should be able to reduce the weapon's accuracy by disabling the satellite ground control center at Cobalt Cave. With the bulk of the enemy forces shifted to Archelon Fortress, the enemy poses little threat at Cobalt Cave. However, with the threat that Fenrir poses, 
we must take this opportunity to minimize its capabilities. Destroy all of the satellite antennas at Cobalt Cave. I said both the 32 and the 47 in it. Flying is off today. Those things you see on top of the island are satellite control antennas. You're going to have to destroy each and every one of them. Flying is really off today. It's gonna make it really awkward for most of us.
I, I just sank you. Ass. Sam's. The equation. That's fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> Son of a bitch. Okay, fuck it. I was gonna try and wipe everything out, but I guess I'm just gonna focus on the You're going to have to destroy each and every one of them. That was a very short one. That was fucking annoying though. All satellite control centers and antennas have been destroyed. This should weaken Fenrir's microwave weapon. 
Archelon Fortress is the final obstacle standing between us and total victory, sir. Alright, let's see what our last aircraft is. End of deception. Let's go. We've advanced within striking distance of Archelon Fortress. Fenrir, the whole reason they started this war is being made right here on this base. It's our duty to wipe this base clear off the map. The HPM has been transported to Archelon Fortress from Cobalt Cave. And it appears it has already been fitted to Fenrir. The weapon works by emitting microwaves from both Fenrir and Archelon Fortress to create an overlapping field effect, detonating all fuel caught in between. Fly too slow for too long, and you'll be tracked by the targeting system. If you don't escape quickly, your fuel tank will explode. Thankfully, the targeting system has been impaired by the destruction of the satellite targeting facility at Cobalt Cave. Even with the targeting system impaired, the HPM still poses a threat. Be careful. We've also received intel that the Archelon Fortress is equipped with the same type of shock cannon employed on the Gleipnir. Sir, we've succeeded in freeing Aurelia. The war should have already been over for us. But someone has to put an end to this. Just make sure you come back alive. As I wrote down the words that would reveal the truth to the world, I couldn't help but feel uneasy. It said that the only true winners in any war are those who achieve what they intended. Diego Navarro had left Aurelia's capital in defeat, yet his goal of increasing arms exports had been achieved. It seemed as though he may be the true victor in this war. After returning to his homeland, it appears that he now plans to unveil the ultimate weapon before his countrymen. Satellite images of the Archelon Fortress will provide the backdrop for his speech to the world. Such audacity must come from his confidence in this ultimate weapon, Fenrir. There's no such thing as a foolproof plan, I whispered to myself. Everyone's got as a I plan until they the take a cam to the face. Wheel across the sky overhead. Even the country's hero, still in the heat of battle, hadn't returned home for the celebration of victory. The Southern Cross will ensure Navarro's plan ends in failure. Ain't that right?
Well, after like four or five tries, yeah. attitude about this. Take it out. Maybe there's something on the porch that I can do with it. Take, take it out that way.
Son of a bitch. Oh no, he's been shot down. Well, I did say it would probably take like three or four tries. But now I know that there's nothing at the fortress that I can hit. Hmm. That attack probably came from Fenrir's HPM. Your fuel tank and your sensors will be displayed on the MPG. The MPG will display any increase in fuel temperature. So watch it closely. Fenrir is equipped with the same type of optical camouflage as the Airborne Fortress. However, with Aurelia's satellite surveillance system back online, we should be able to track its position. Although the tracking is far from perfect, please bear that in mind when attacking. I see a bonus target. Ah, uh, we have a container ship to shoot.
pretty badly damaged. Should only be one more pass. Three, two, one. Second try. Oof. Yeah, this one is definitely harder than the standard Holy Trilogy was. Like, Pixie didn't give me as much trouble as half these fights. Holy shit. Four might be somewhere in difficulty. Well, you know, the only time four gave me trouble was Yellow Squadron. Actually, this one's definitely the hardest, because I had to rely on cams to get a lot of those enemies. Archelon and Diego Navarro's beloved weapon, Fenrir, were ripped by explosions and engulfed in flames. While these images flashed on the screen, the eyes of the press watched as the enraged citizens of Laysath stormed in on commanding officer Diego Navarro. When the rage of the thousands had finally subsided, it is said that there was nothing left but the shattered remains of Fenrir. It's ironic that the stage for the unveiling of his greatest triumph would be his ultimate undoing. When it was all over, I tried to get an interview with the Southern Cross, only to find that he had already returned to Cape Aubrey. He said he's never really liked hot weather. Eugene Solano, the young radio operator, answered sheepishly. Peace had returned sheepishly. to Griswold, and it was now covered in the colors of the Christmas season. I went ahead and bought myself a figure of Santa, the kind that I could only find here. Albert, I thought you couldn't stand the Southern Hemisphere. A fellow reporter said to me as he saw Wait, the really? Santa figure, this is... a memento of this That's Southern Albert? Hemisphere of backward seasons. What I like the, the design. I said Different as I embarrassingly actor, showed it to like, him. But they it also did the age of like the Southern Cross. Ten years. So fair enough. Also, I want that Santa figure. Thing would be rad. And of course, we have our ending credits. Very chill. a chill music. I like it. So yeah, final thoughts on the game. It is fun. It has the most super weapons. It has the most super planes. But it's tough. At least comparatively. Maybe, although, then again, I haven't played any of the Holy Trilogy, Trilogy for the first time since, like, hard to say, but it definitely feels tougher. But all in all, I would say it is very good. Uh, I would place it above... I would place it, uh, as far as my Ace Combat rankings go, favorite is still zero, followed by seven. This one, I'm going to give it a tie for that third place with uh, Electrosphere. And then four, and then five to play through the legitimate, like the actual version of 2, because I only played the remake. I can do that one next. But 
after that it's two and it's, it's the remake and uh, six. And then below the two Hawks games is Ace Combat Assault Horizon. But uh, this one was nice. I'm definitely glad I looked into it and I'm glad I played it. It's a good time. Would play again. Probably will at some point. and this lovely chill, chill beat. Also worth mentioning, soundtrack, nice. I love the electronic influences because it's kind of bridging between the rest of the series and Ace Combat 3. But with the war profiteering, I kind of can see that opening up the gates for corporations to step in. Moving on the game that takes place in like this sort of transition time frame. But so far it's just this one and three. It's like places you get sci your sci-fi stuff. Unless you count XI, which I don't, because it's real world. And again, I haven't played it yet, so who knows? By the way, you did good, Namco Bandai. <laughs> 